All right, welcome back. In the last video, we briefly talked about what a fluid is, right? And we really came to this definition that a fluid really is a substance that continuously deforms when acted upon by a shear force. And we talked a lot about these molecular bonds in different mediums, right? In a body of water, in this big metal box. But the question here is, how do we actually classify fluids based on these molecular bonds, these molecular behaviors. Well, you might have heard the definition, fluids assume the shape of their container. Right, fluids, they assume the shape of their container. We're kind of used to this definition, right? If you pour water into a empty container, the water is going to deform and it's going to take the shape of that container, right? It's going to fill in all the empty voids in that container. So fluids assume the shape of their container. So when we look at something like a piece of rock, right? This is, this is my pet rock, right? Obviously we know that a rock is not a fluid, right? It's a solid. But let's try to understand why that is, you know, based off of this definition that we have here. So if we took this pet rock and we placed it into some container, the rock isn't just going to magically start deforming and, and assume the shape of the container, right? It's going to remain intact because there's no external force being applied to it. In other words, if we looked at the molecules that make up this rock, the actual bonds between the molecules, they're very, very strong, right? And they won't the rock won't deform unless it's acted upon by some external force. Very similar to this metal box that we were studying up here. We had this external shear force and that's what caused this metal box to deform some delta x. Now what if this pet rock suddenly turned into a uh, water? What if this pet rock became pet water? Well. That would be a very sad pet rock because it's not a rock anymore, it's now pet water. Okay, listen, I'm very bad at jokes, so just bear with me. Well, similar to this body of water, the molecular bonds between each water molecule are very, very weak. And if we left this body of water in this container, or if we placed this body of water in this container, really what would happen is this body of water would assume the shape of the container, right? It'll settle until all the voids, all the empty spaces in this container are filled. And then finally, we would have a happy body of water, right? But there's something pretty special about water in general, right? We've been studying these molecular bonds. Let's actually take a closer look at this body of water. So if I were to expand and zoom in to this body of water, you would actually see all the water molecules are actually packed very nicely against one another, right? This is how water molecules settle into an empty void. Now, we know that water molecule bonds are very, very weak. So if you put your hand in this body of water, you could move this water around and you can swish and you know, the water molecules will slide past your hand, they'll slide past one another, and that's because of the weak molecular bonds. But water molecules will also pack together as close as possible, but they'll still be able to move past around one another. But if you just left this body of water very still, they're all going to compact into any empty space that's available in this container. And because these molecules are packed as closely as possible with one another, we say that water is incompressible. Incompressible. And what that means is that if we applied some type of external force to this body of water and we tried to push these molecules even closer to one another, that necessarily won't happen because they're already packed as close as possible as they can physically be already. So because of that, we say that water is incompressible. But there's actually a special word for incompressible fluids, and we call that liquids. So we know that water is a liquid, but it's a liquid because the water molecules are incompressible, right? Water is incompressible. You can't physically push the molecules any closer than they already are. And because of that definition, 
water is a liquid. And a liquid is just one type of fluid. So we've talked about incompressible fluids and we've talked about what a liquid is. Does that mean there are compressible fluids? And does that mean there are other types of fluids? Well, as a surprise to nobody, if there's incompressible fluids, there's probably something known as compressible fluids. And that probably constitutes a separate discussion. So we'll talk about compressible and incompressible fluids and other types of fluids in the next video. So we'll see you then.